tell my legs that. Yo. Hey, yo. Shoot. I hit. Yes. Let's yes. Go! <laughs> Let's go, dude. Get the fire oh, alive. Ladies and gentlemen, Celestial Nighthawk is back. I actually can't believe I'm saying those words in the year 2023. I thought for sure that Nighthawk was just dead and buried in the water the moment that Star Eater Scales released in the game. But recently, Bungie, and I mean really, really recently, Bungie announced in the patch notes to Season of the Wish, not the tweet article before that, but the patch notes that Celestial Nighthawk was buffed not only in getting percentages in super energy when getting kills, but much, 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 much more importantly, you get a flat 25% extra damage boost to your Celestial Nighthawk Golden Gun. This is a gigantic buff to the point where it actually makes Celestial Nighthawk relevant and borderline actually better than Star Eater Scales in certain boss fights. So to give you guys an idea of just how close Nighthawk one for one with a Golden Gun Star Eater 3 shot is, I'm gonna play you a clip of doing the exact same setup on Kali where one of the runs was me using Nighthawk and one of the runs was me using Star Eaters. And you could just see based on the boss's health alone that it is very, very close. Seven forty three, honest. Okay. Literally half. So rotating back to the idea of Nighthawk is better in certain situations, I'm going to show you a clip here in a second of us doing a Keitel run, and it's the perfect example of using Nighthawk, where Keitel, for example, is a very short damage phase in little bursts where you ring a bell, and then you have 10 seconds to damage her properly until you have to move on to the other bell. In this situation, Nighthawk is just a one-shot nuke, so it just nukes her health down very quickly, and in our case, well, you'll see it, it takes less than two bells. And... bell. Yep, killer. Nice little one bell. one bell and a key and a storm tracer. Let's put it that way. And then in something like Star Eaters, you would have to go activate your Goldie for Star Eaters, shoot your three shots, and then continue your damage, which obviously shooting three shots takes more time than shooting one shot. So in this situation, Nighthawk would be better. But in the counterpoint, just to make it clear, something like a Crota boss fight where he has a metric F ton of health, Star Eater shines more because it's a extended prolonged damage phase and you can light up Crota with unlimited amounts of Star Eater Golden Gun shots if you have multiples on your team. Whereas Nighthawk, you get your one shot off and then you're done. So let's break down the build. I'm sure that's why you guys are here. I'm going to go over this as fast as possible and make it as simple as possible just to not waste your guys' time. So for the setup in Goldie, the only thing you really realistically need is the Marksman Super here. And then it kind of depends on what you want to have for a grenade. For example, healing it for survivability. Or if you want to have an active grenade to activate one of the artifact perks where using your ability on a boss or a champion weakens them. And you can use that as a replacement for tractor cannon, which is a part of this build. In fragments, again, nothing really matters. You can run whatever you want. But obviously, if you want to capitalize on things like extending your radiance and restoration, things like that, then you can use those in this slot. But nothing here is mandatory. I have an ignition build, so I didn't really need to mess with anything there. Now, for the build itself, like I mentioned, Tractor Cannon is there to give you that 30% debuff on regardless of which golden gun you want to use, whether it's Nighthawk or uh, Star Eaters. So it's kind of, I would say, a mandatory pick unless you just happen to have a random teammate with like a tether. Then in my energy slot, I have a solar weapon because it's going to be tying into my Nighthawk with having a solar siphon on because I want to generate orbs of power prior to a boss fight if I can. Now, the final slot here, this isn't set in stone, but you could use different weapons in this slot to get a strand or a stasis debuff on an enemy. So I'm using one of the new weapons from this season. It's a super cluster with a slice perk that says, casting your class ability, which is my radiant dodge, by the way, allows this weapon to sever targets on hit for a brief duration up to a maximum number of targets. We'll explain why this is important in a second, 
but I did want to note that and also mention the Radiant Dodge, by the way, Acrobat's Dodge. You do this near your fire team and you make all of them Radiant, but there's multiple ways of doing this this season anyway. So let's just go into the armor now. Obviously, you have Celestial Nighthawk in the armor on your helmet, and then in the middle slots, I have Powerful Friends and Radiant Light because once I activate my Golden Gun near my teammates, I will automatically give them an armor charge, and that'll come into play into my boots here in a second. Same thing with Radiant Light. Uh, they just work oppositely to each other. I don't know if oppositely is even a word, but there you go. In the gloves, you don't really need anything specific, but I do like having Heavy Handed and Focusing Strike in here because the Focusing Strike is a good replacement for Star Eaters when you need that class ability back to do your dodge to yoink all the orbs up again. And the Heavy Handed is there to make orbs of power again because I want to have armor charges in the event that I don't have a Radiant Light Powerful Friends setup. Chest doesn't matter, just have reserves on for whatever you're doing. Boots, you have the Star Eater setup in your Legendary Boots as well. You have two Kinetic Weapon Surge mods, not three. Three got patched, quote-unquote, so you want to have two on here. And then if you have extra room, I would put an Insulation mod in on that slot as well because that gives you uh, reduced class ability cooldown each time you pick up an Orb of Power. Then in the class item, you have Double Power Attraction and Distribution. Again, it's from the Star Eater setup. You don't need to change anything, really. If you want, you can put a time dilation in here instead. Or maybe, like, put in Bomber, for example, something like that. But I think this setup is perfectly fine with just powerful attraction and uh, distribution. Now, the wild card here is the artifact for this season. That has multiple things that you could be using this season. For example, if you're fighting Taken or Scorn enemies, you could use this. For once you came, you increase ability damage to Taken and Scorn combatants. That's pretty neat. Then you have uh, Kindling Trigger. Radiant causes solar weapons to apply Scorch to Unscorched Combatants when you're using your solar weapons. You have uh, Flint Striker. Rapid Solar Weapon Precision Hits and Rapid Solar Weapon Final Blows grant Radiant. Like I mentioned, there's multiple ways of getting Radiant. While Radiant, with the Torch Artifact perk, you deal increased weapon damage to combatants affected by Strand and Stasis. So remember when I mentioned Slice earlier? This is what I mean. You also could use, like, Navigator, for example, to use Sever. You could use the freezing aspect of uh, an Agar's Scepter, or you could use something like Riptide with Chill Clip, or any other weapon with Chill Clip, for that matter. And then you have the number one perk in this build, Heart of the Flame. Casting your Solar Super grants nearby allies Radiant, and increases the damage of your Super for each nearby ally. So, you pop Golden Gun next to your teammates, and bam, you have free extra Super damage, and it makes everything go nuclear. Then you have Revitalizing Blast, also as a replacement if you don't want to run Tractor Cannon. This is basically throw your solar ability at a champ or a boss, and you get a weakened effect on them. But it's not as strong as Tractor Cannon, so keep that in mind. And in the final column, I haven't gotten to this part yet, but you could run like Argent Ordinance, or Solar Operative, or Razor Precision, which is while Radiant, Solar Precision Final Blows, cause combatants to ignite. Also pretty neat. So that's the full build. It's pretty simple and straight to the point. The real two key factors to this is having Nighthawk on, and then having your Surge mods on with some form of getting to your Radiant and Orbs of Power to just smash a boss's help down almost instantly. I'll also be putting up a Dim Link in case anybody wants to copy down the build and maybe play with it yourself or toy with the mods, whatever you would like. But aside from that, if you enjoyed the video or maybe this build has piqued your interest and you're enjoying it, please consider subscribing today or maybe leaving a like and or comment on the channel. It is much appreciated and it does help the channel grow as well as fight that YouTube algorithm. And if you can't think of any comment to put, simply put Golden Gun. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.